What's up guys, it's the MMA Analyst here to give you my recap for UFC on FX1. Uh, damn. Um, overall, actually, I did alright. 7-3. and three. For my betting picks, I got uh, 2 wrong. But I got like, my I had, I think, 3 diamond, 3 platinum picks, 1 diamond pick. So my top picks went through. Um, only thing I got wrong were, was, was a gold pick, Eric Schaefer and, uh, Melvin Gillard. Let's get right down to the main event, Melvin Gillard. Uh, whoa. See, what I had predicted was Melvin Gillard would go in there, catch Jim Miller in the first round, and that you can't really recover from a Melvin Gillard, uh, onslaught. Right? So, you know, I'm watching the fight. It's going, you know... Boom, he hits him. I'm like, there we go. You know, that's it. Fight's over, right? Whoa. All right, so basically the situation is uh, if you're not top three or something like that, you're not going to uh, beat Jim Miller. Damn, that was impressive. He took his beating, uh, you, know, got the, uh, you know, got in close, got tight enough to to, uh, you know, t just to ride out that tough time. And then before you knew it, he, has, he was on his back. Now, how did he get his back? I mean, I know Melvin Gillard is confident in his takedown defense. He also does like to do a lot of cool stuff. He went for uh, another jumping knee. <sighs> I don't know if that's the smartest move, to be honest. I'm not going to say that this is a Melvin Gillard, uh, you know, mix up mess up like in poker it would be called like the Mattisau uh blow up I'm not gonna say it was the Mattisau blow up or the Gallard mix up here I'm just saying I don't know if you want to do that in this situation just you know just box you know at this point you've hurt Miller you know but uh, it is what it is man Miller's a beast uh at this point in his career who has he lost to he lost to Henderson he lost to Gray Maynard, and he lost to Frankie Edgar, and that's it. Frankie Edgar back in 2006 when he was 5-0. and um, Gray Maynard when he was 13-1, and and Ben Henderson when he was 20-2. and It's a beast right here. Um, tough situation for him. He's going to have to, I don't know who's going to fight or what he's going to do. Um, because he's kind of right back in the mix. Like he lost, but then he went and beat Melvin Gillard. So who next? Uh, but anyways, great win for Jim Miller. I basically underestimated his toughness. Um, that's it. I underestimated his toughness, and I don't think I can do that again. Next fight, Josh Neer versus Dwayne Bang Ludwig. Uh, this was such a close fight to look into. It was a coin flip, like, you know... You know, it is what it is. Um, I thought Josh Neer would go for the takedowns before Ludwig because he would kind of need to do that. And that's what he did. But, I mean, he was really badass, though. Like, uh, like he was just like, you know, he got hurt. But he was like, yeah, let's go. You know, like early with the first time he kind of waved him on. He was he was hurt there. And, um, you know, when he caught his leg, he was calm, like pulled him out like from the cage, tripped him up. You know, mad props near, you know, that was a Diaz-esque type of performance with just really just, you know, being badass. Uh, mad props. Dwayne Bang Ludwig, damn, you know, tough one. Um, I mean, it, you look like you probably could have won that fight, um, minus just the fact that, you know, Nier got it to the ground and was able to capitalize with his jiu-jitsu. But overall, that was a good fight. By the way... Whole card wasn't the whole card really really good. I mean, let me just real quick. You know, the main card obviously the main event was good. Near versus Ludwig, that's badass. Mike Easton versus Papazian, or you know, I mean, what what was that? That was crazy. Um, Pat Barry versus Moorcraft. I'm down with that. What's that? You know, uh, the only decision there is probably gonna end up being the fight of the night. Rivera versus Schaefer, solid. Charlie Roos, uh, Nurga met up. I mean, solid. Charlie Brenneman, okay, there you go. The low point, but you had to know that was going to happen. Camos, Pineda, Sandoval. I mean, damn, that's a, that's a solid card. The UFC's been putting together some good cards. All right, Mike Easton, uh, Jared uh, Papazian. Wow. I mean, 
when Easton was coming out, this was my diamond pick. When Easton was coming out, I was like, calm down, man. Damn, I don't need you getting all hyper and do, going crazy. And then he came out with that freaking, you know, Don Fry Takiyama type thing, uppercuts all day. I'm like, oh, man, these guys are going to get tired. Mike Easton, calm down. But, I mean, man, he was really confident in his game. Uh, well-rounded. That's what I like to see. A solid win. Uh, close fight. Really close fight. And, uh, you know, a really good win for, for Mike Easton. So, mad props there. Papazian, you know, coming in, making his debut. And he's going to be a, a problem for, for some folks. I mean, Easton wasn't exactly, uh, you know, Division One wrestler going to try and take you down and lay on you. So, we'll have to see what uh, Papazian can do against that. But, uh, you know, solid stand-up for sure. Pat, per- Pat Berry versus Christian Moorcraft. Damn, Pat. Really? Really, Pat? Wow. This dude got up twice. That's two times more than I thought I would ever see Pat Berry get up. And he got out of a couple submission attempts? Pat Berry? What? He just, he just secured himself th- uh, uh, th- three losses in a row. Basically, the UFC will allow him... To fight another potential three losses in a row. I'm always rooting for Pat Berry. Uh, you know, but I'm saying, you know, that's good, man. That's like when you get you in your last life in like some video game and you pick up, you know, the three extra lives and you're like, all right, we're good. Um, Christian Warcraft, obviously his ground game is not the great greatest or anything like that. So it's not like Pat Berry uh, you know stopped, you know, Kane Velasquez's ground game or got out of a submission from uh I don't know, from Verdum, but Pat Berry not too long ago got security guard choked by Mirko Krokop. So that alone, to go from a sec- by security guard choke, I mean, when you just go like this, when you just hold him by, you know, hold him like, stop resisting, stop resisting, no hooks, nothing. You know, you can't choke me with the security guard choke. I'm going to get out of that. Um, so I'm just saying. So, yeah, I'm sure he, he, he didn't go, obviously, up here, but he came from way, way down in the depths of the grappling world, and he is kind of like at least white belt area. Before, he was worse than white belt. I, you, you, it, I'm just, good job, Pat Berry. Then you went with a vicious knockout. Good Lord. Yikes. Is Christian Warcraft Okay. Whoa. Eric Schaefer, you... <sighs> what was that? You miss a takedown and that's it? That's it? No fight? You just go first round, get on top, do your thing. And then second round, go for a takedown. Early in the round. Get hit. That's it? You just gonna quit? That's it? That was ugly, man. I mean, that was, that was doo-doo. Um, congrats to Jorge Rivera. The end of a solid uh, mixed martial arts career. He did get to go out on a win. He has faced, uh, you know, the best. Um, you know, he faced Rich Franklin. He faced, faced Anderson Silva. He faced, um, you know, even Lee Murray. Um, you know, Lee Murray, right? Lee Murray. He first faced a lot of tough guys. Martin Campman, Terry Martin, Michael Bisping, you know, some famous popular ones, some of the best, infamous. He faced them all. I mean, uh, so congratulations. You, you got out of the sport with your brain intact. And uh, hopefully what happens next, whatever your life is, is, you know, it's on point. All right. Kamal Shalarus versus uh, Habib. No go mad off. Um, I thought Kamal Shalarus was gonna be able to do what he did in the first round for basically the whole fight. And by the first round, I mean the first round before that punch when he got up from the takedown. After that fight, after that round, like he was out. I mean, he he had to ask multiple times going into the third round. We got one more round, like he just he was gone, and he never really recovered from that. If I was Shalarus, I would be. This would be one of my most upsetting, like to get. 
to lose to a guy whose striking looks so bad, he would just do this tiger uppercut every time. So, ugh, just gross. Just gross. Um, congratulations to Khabib with his, uh, you know, 17th straight win. Um, getting that, like, no celebrating, all right? So when you get back to Russia or wherever, uh, do something. Get on that punching bag. Get in, start training because it's going to get tougher from here. A lot tougher. Um, yeah, so. Charlie Brenneman, yeah, he did what he was going to do. Take down Daniel Roberts, right? Can we move on? Congratulations, Charlie Brenneman. Uh, Daniel's out of here. Fabricio Camos, um, solid uh, win. I was kind of worried early, but he did his thing. Uh, congratulations, uh, Daniel Pineda. These first three fights all together, it was like, you know, kind of like just over a round of fighting. 22 seconds, a minute, 31 seconds, and four minutes. Uh, Daniel Pineda, good win over Schilling. And uh, Nick Dennis, yikes. Just crumpled Joseph Sandoval. So there you go. Um, overall, for the card, I did have, like I said in, in my betting picks, I only had a, I had the straight money on Gallard. That didn't work out too well. And then I had a parlay of Mike Easton and Nick Dennis. And that went fine. At the end of the day, I'm kind of like even. Um, but yeah. In my race to 200, I was in the lead too. In this one here, I was 7 and 3, and I lost 3 points. Basically, what I'm telling you is the other dude who was in second, Surfer Ken, is now in first place. Because he went 10-0. and 0. That's boss right there. Good work, Surfer Ken. Shout out to Surfer Ken. We did have somebody um, pull out of the card uh, of the race. Um, ironically, this person was in last place. They said that they wanted to scale back on their picks. Which basically means they're not going to be picking... Um, the uh, the lesser knowns because they don't have time. I understand they don't have time to uh, to to do the research. So if they don't know, for example, you know that Nick Dennis is going to whoop on Sandoval because you know whatever reason he's not going to pick. So for this fight, like the guy still did a prediction, he just didn't include the first three fights. So you know I think he actually did all right. You know to be fair. But he didn't include the first three fights just because he didn't have a good read on them. Um, I don't know. I don't really care. You know, it's just a race to 200. But halfway through the race, I'm not even saying who it is. Halfway through the race, when he was down 11 fights, 11, he says he wants out. And we were all going to, every person in the race had to buy the winner a shirt, like an MMA shirt. And he doesn't want to do that either. He's like, I didn't agree to that. And this guy's Canadian too, which makes us other Canadians look bad. You know what I mean? So it's a damn shame. MMA, it's important, y'all. Peace.